Hi guys, my name is Houndy, um, at least that's my name on the Fantasy Ground forums, and I'm going to be talking to you about my new extension called Wolf Initiative Add-on. It's built upon the add-on created by Stalker87 is his name on the forums, and Jarek is his name on the add-on, and um, so I've credited him here. I, also, I want to say a massive thank you to him because he has allowed me to use his initial extension and build upon it and release it as my own version. Um, so thank you very much to him. His code is really good, although I've had to rewrite a lot of it just because of the way that I've been doing this. So this video is going to talk through the basic functionality of Wolf Initiative. Um, it's going to show you some of the differences from the old add-on, but it's going to assume that you've never used Wolf Initiative at all before. This is only been tested for and works for 5e, and also I've only been testing and running it on Fantasy Grounds Unity, unlike the original one which was only tested on Fantasy Ground Classic. This may work on Fantasy Ground Classics, but it has not been tested, um, but feel free to use that if you want to. So let's get started. So you might have seen earlier, this is the Wolf Initiative screen. It's slightly different than before. It's got a few more buttons, a few more sections. Um, and you'll notice that originally it used to populate from the party sheet. So the PCs would have appeared there. But due to performance issues with the number of NPCs that can be added, um, I changed it so that it grabs information from the combat tracker now. It also just grabs the information directly from the database of the combat tracker. It doesn't copy it like it used to from the party sheet for the PCs. So hopefully that will sort out some of the issues of performance. Of course, um, if any of you have been using Fantasy Ground units at Unity at this time of making the video, there's quite a few performance issues anyway. It is still in beta, and hopefully when they sort those things out, all of the extensions will also um, improve in, in performance as well. So let's get started. Um, so I've also got a, another instance open so I can be a character. So I'll just select Vina. Mm, interesting. This seems to be another bug in Unity sometimes. This happens even on a completely brand new instance. So let's go through it. There we go. So that selected it properly this time. So let's go through here. Right. So first things we'll have to do is we'll have to add our characters to the combat tracker. And you'll notice that they have now been added to the role for initiative screen. Slightly different from before, green now means that all of the roles that they need to do has been completed. Previously, if you requested one role and then it was done, it would go green. Even, and then even if you requested, say, five roles and they did one of those roles, it would go green. So this only is green if they've done all of the roles that they need to do. And it's useful to see if a player's not been rolling or has been missing things out. Um, so let's go ahead and do a role. So you can select by clicking. You can also select all, unselect all, and it works similar to the NPCs, which I'll show maybe in a separate part two video. Um, so let's go to Arena. So let's say we just want to do an intimidation check. Um, Arena, please, can you do an intimidation check? You click that. That now turns red, that little icon, so you know that, that she hasn't completed her wall. So over here, you'll see the pop up on her screen. And it says GM's role request, that's new as well. Um, that separates it from a new thing I've added, which I'll talk about in another video. And then they can just, they can either get rid of it if they don't want to do it, or they've already done it manually, or they can click on the check. So let's go for it. Off she goes. Gets a nice high 18 intimidation check. We can see that on here. And now you notice it's gone back to green because she has completed her check. So that's just your simple, normal skill. Now what you can also do is add a DC to this. So say you want her to perform, do a performance check playing an instrument, and you want, but you want her to beat or equal DC 15, um, or else she won't get paid. So you DC 15 request roll. Go back over. Tells you DC 15 performance check. 
Ooh, on that one. <laughs> so she definitely failed there. Did not get the DC. And whilst we're talking about DC, this is an original option that was on here. So the show DC to play it is on, but you can turn it off. Request. And you'll see that it doesn't say the DC anymore. Now, because of the way Fantasy the 5e works, it does actually pump the DC out onto the screen. So after they've run the check, they'll be able to. Um, that's something that I may look into in a future update so that it becomes completely secret. Um, we'll see about that. Right, so that's how DC works. So let's reset that. You can also give advantage and a modifier if you want. So let's say we're being really generous, uh, giving her advantage and plus five, which is basically double advantage. So you request that, and then on the screen you'll see plus five and advantage. Plus five. So she got plus nine because she's got a base of plus four. She got advantage. Uh, only got a seven, but seven plus nine is sixteen. So just about. So off we go. I think what I'm going to also change soon is this, that this automatically resets once you click request wall. Um, and then there's another one which is hidden. So maybe you don't want her to see the result. So let's say you ask her to do an insight check. You don't really want her working out the DC or anything of the inside check or the or how well she's done. Because um, people quite often meta game in those sort of instances. So request, go back over. It will let them know that this is hidden, so they're not going to be able to see it. They roll. See, it does a tower roll. They can't see it. Of course, the DM can see it, and she rolled terribly. <laughs> so. That's that. And you've got the strength checks. You have saves. Again, if you wanted that to be against a particular DC, you'd have to enter it there. You can make them roll a particular dice. Oops, sorry, that's some code. And yeah, and this is a really nice functionality, the initiative role, which is what it's named after. Um, it was on there originally. So, you now want all of the people to roll initiative, so you can select all NPC, oh, sorry, select all PCs, um, and it will select them all. Now, because only Ravina is controlled by a player, it's going to ask me as the DM to do the roles for the other two. So you'll notice that when I request, so here we go request. So I as the DM own these two, so I'll roll the initiative and then go over to Ravina and roll for her initiative. And you'll see there, all nice, 2027, 2027 it automatically updates the combat tracker. So there we go. Now death saving throws, like the well, how all the co underlying code for Fantasy Grounds Unity works is it will only apply it if they have wounds equal to the HP. So let's say Tana took 40 wounds. Now, if we request a death saving throw, and he rolls, we look at his combat sheet, you'll see that it's done there. Um, you got a critical failure. I was wondering why it was two ticks. Um, so, yeah. If you rolled that, so now that I've got rid of the wounds, uh, it's not the way you should be doing it for the system, but if I requested it without there being those four wounds, you will notice that it doesn't do anything. Uh, it's nothing to do with the extension, that's just how Fantasy Grounds works normally. So I think that's all of the basic functionalities for players. Um, I don't have a proper YouTube account, so I'm not sure how this still works, so I might see you in the next video, or I might just continue on after a few seconds pause.